Welcome back everyone, I'm Jordan Giesegi, and this is The Limiting Factor. This is the fourth video of the GigaCasting series. Today, we're going to look at the challenges of GigaCasting and the engineering solutions Tesla has in place to ensure that their GigaPresses are consistently pumping out high-quality, intricate, die-cast parts at high speed. Most of the engineering solutions I'll be covering today aren't necessarily unique to Tesla, but I felt they were too interesting to be left out of the GigaCasting series. Before we begin, a special thanks to my Patreon supporters and YouTube members. This is the support that gives me the freedom to avoid chasing the algorithm and sponsors. As always, the links for support are in the description. Let's dive right into the challenges of GigaCasting and how they're solved. Depending on how you slice it, there are at least a dozen ways to cast molten aluminum. Tesla's GigaPresses use high-pressure die casting. High pressure die casting can fill the die cavity in a tenth of a second, which allows for faster production rates. Additionally, due to the high injection velocity, it can produce intricate shapes because the molten aluminum can be injected before the metals had a chance to cool. However, it does come with drawbacks, or if you think like an engineer, fun challenges. This brings us to the first challenge of gigacasting. The rapid injection of high pressure die casting combined with rapid cooling causes air that's in the die cavity to become trapped in the cast part, creating porosity. Porosity weakens the die cast part because where there should be solid metal, there's a void filled with air which can lead to weak parts that crack easily. Furthermore, the porosity is random and therefore leads to inconsistent strength across castings. When part strength is inconsistent, there are two options. Scrap the parts that aren't up to spec and or make the parts thicker and heavier so that fewer parts need to be scrapped. That is, porosity generates waste through scrap, extra mass through over-engineered parts, and heavy and efficient vehicles. Was Tesla able to somehow reduce the porosity of their gigacastings? In short, yes. Let's take a closer look. The first source of gas, and therefore porosity, in aluminum castings is that molten aluminum readily reacts with atmospheric water vapor and water in or on the raw materials to form hydrogen gas that becomes dissolved in the molten aluminum. The aluminum industry solves this problem by injecting argon gas into the molten aluminum. The hydrogen gas preferentially diffuses into the argon gas, and as the argon bubbles out of the molten aluminum, it takes the hydrogen gas with it. Alex Voigt has confirmed that Tesla is using this argon gas process, and credit to him for bringing this to my attention. Bubbling argon gas through the molten aluminum appears to be common in the casting industry, and not unique to Tesla. How else might Tesla be reducing the porosity of gigacastings? In this paper, titled Effect of Super Vacuum Assisted High Pressure Die Casting on Cast Alloys, the researchers used a vacuum system to remove air from the die cavity before injecting the molten aluminum. There was one vacuum channel at the top of the die cavity and one near the shot sleeve. The shot sleeve is where the molten aluminum is injected. As discussed earlier, the rapid injection and cooling of molten aluminum involved in gigacasting causes air that's in the die cavity to become trapped in the cast part, creating porosity. Applying a vacuum to the die cavity before injection sucks out the air and therefore reduces porosity. The end result? The image on the left didn't use vacuum-assisted die casting, and the image on the right did. I've marked some of the porosity in red to make the difference clear. The reduction in porosity was drastic and, as you'd expect, significantly improved strength and elongation results. Let's do a quick refresher on stress and strain to understand what's meant by strength and elongation. As this video by Real Engineering shows, ultimate strength measures the maximum amount of stress a metal can handle before fracturing. Elongation measures strain, which is a measure of how far a metal can stretch before fracturing. Looking at the test results, the green circles are from conventional, non-vacuum-assisted, high-pressure die-cast parts. The red hexagons are the test results from the parts formed with vacuum-assisted, high-pressure die-casting. What the graph is telling us is that the vacuum-formed parts were, on average, 5.6% stronger and could stretch 43% farther before fracturing. 
Furthermore, because the red hexagons are clustered in a tighter pattern, it means the test results were more consistent. The researchers found that the consistency for the elongation measurements improved by 71%. Meanwhile, the consistency of strength improved by 86%. This means that not only is the vacuum cast aluminum stronger and has better elongation characteristics, engineers can have more confidence that the parts will perform as expected. This allows the engineers to design thinner parts and or reduce scrap. Is Tesla using super vacuum? Yes, it appears so. I'll explain why later in the video. The second challenge of gigacasting is wear and tear on the casting dies. Aluminum alloys that contain silicon, like Tesla is using, react with steel. That is, the skin of the aluminum casting likes to stick to or eat away at the steel walls of the die cavity, causing wear and tear. This is a big deal because large machine parts like dies can cost over a million dollars. If the casting eats away at or sticks to the die, each time a casting is removed, it takes some of the million dollar plus die with it, meaning the die needs to be replaced more frequently, meaning higher production costs. From what I can see, there are three ways to deal with this kind of wear and tear on the die. First, in the alloy video, I advise that Tesla is using several elements that act as die release agents which have a non-stick effect. Second, Tesla is quite likely using vegetable oil to coat the die cavity between presses. This oil is the same as the cooking oil you'd use at home, except Tesla is making 70 kilogram metal pancakes. Third, die surface treatments like nitriding or carbonitriding can make the die more robust. All three of these solutions appear to be common in the industry. The next challenge for Tesla is the thermal regulation of the gigacasting machine. High pressure die casting has two thermal requirements. First, that the die is hot enough so that the molten aluminum doesn't solidify too quickly as it flows through the die cavity. If the aluminum solidifies too quickly, it can create casting defects like cold shut. Cold shut is where two flows of molten aluminum meet and form a seam, which is a weakness. The second thermal requirement is that the die cools quickly and evenly after the aluminum is injected. If the aluminum doesn't cool quickly, it can slow down the production rate. If it doesn't cool evenly, the part can warp. As a side note, Tesla noted at battery day that their castings don't warp. This would be due to both the thermal regulation system and the fact that Tesla developed their own in-house alloy that doesn't require heat treatments. Heat treatments are often used to strengthen parts and can warp the parts if they're not cooled evenly. Check out my alloy video if you'd like to know more. In one of their promotional videos, LK Machinery points out the thermal regulation and vacuum units for their gigacasting machine, the Impress Plus. The thermal regulation units are also visible in this photo from Giga Shanghai, and each machine appears to use about 20. Tesla purchases gigapresses from both LK Machinery in China and IDRA in Italy. So I also contacted IDRA to check if they offered both vacuum casting and thermal regulation units for their machines. They do, and the contact pointed out that the machines are visible in a three-story structure. I'm assuming the contact is referring to this image from Battery Day, where again, there are about 20 thermal regulation units. Like the other technologies we've discussed so far today, thermal regulation isn't unique to Tesla. However, I do wonder if Tesla is using more cooling units to push their machines to the limit, as Tesla often does. As we'll discuss in the final video of the series, Tesla's goal for their gigapresses exceeds the factory specs for the gigapress. With the challenges and solutions out of the way, let's look at a key benefit of gigacastings that I missed in the original video. In the third row Tesla podcast interview with Elon, he advised that the gigacasting doesn't need machining and doesn't use datums. Let's look at each. In my view, there appears to be two things that Elon could be referring to with machining. First, deburring and trimming off materials such as the sprue, biscuit, runners, and flash, which are excess material left from the casting process. Can Tesla avoid this? It doesn't appear so. In this render, there's a massive biscuit where the molten aluminum is injected, along with some fine runs on the opposite end of the casting, which may not be functional. But is the rendering accurate? 
Footage from Battery Day confirms the biscuit and the fine runs, so they are there in the cast part. Do the biscuit and fine runs make it into the final casting? It doesn't appear so. So, to me, it looks like the biscuit and fine runs are trimmed away in the final product. In this image, the biscuit would have been on the left, and the fine runs would have been on the right. In other words, it appears that Tesla's castings do need to be trimmed up before being sent to the assembly line. This brings us to what I'm calling the second step of machining, which is what Elon was probably referring to when he said machining. I think he's referring to boring out larger holes for mounting points, or milling fine features like screw threads. I couldn't confirm whether Tesla was able to do away with milling and boring because I'd either need enough detail from the battery day images to see things like screw threads, or I'd need to see a final product to look for marks made by milling and boring. What about datums? Datums are markings either cast in place or machined into a part that are used for quality control and for robots to orient themselves with a part. I don't understand the full implications of a part without datums, but I'm assuming it means that the parts are of such high consistency that dimensional quality checks aren't needed, or that the parts are so precise that the robots can use the features of the part to orient themselves rather than a datum. If you know something about machining or datums, let me know if I've gone astray in the comments below. Overall, even if Tesla still needs to do the first step, which is trimming and or deburring, eliminating boring and milling would be a big win for their production process. It would eliminate at least one part of one of the major production steps for aluminum castings. Which of Tesla's innovations allows them to skip some of the machining steps and datums? Based on what I've learned doing this series, it looks like Tesla unlocked the ability to skip machining through a combination of the casting alloy covered in the last video and the massive forces involved in gigacasting. The alloy appears to provide the necessary flow characteristics to form intricate part features, while the gigapress punches the slug of molten aluminum into the die cavity at extreme pressures and speeds, allowing all the die features to completely fill before the molten aluminum solidifies. In summary, the gigapress isn't just one machine. It's a bundle of machines that work in concert to produce parts with a high degree of consistency and quality at a high rate with minimal maintenance while reducing production steps, all of which drive down production cost. The high consistency and quality are provided by vacuum casting technology that reduces the porosity of the cast parts. The importance of this can't be overstated. High part quality and consistency reduces waste and allows for thinner, lighter weight parts to be used. The thermal management system ensures the conditions before, during, and after casting are ideal, which maximizes throughput and reduces the chances of flow defects and warping in the castings. Replacement of the casting die is kept to a minimum by Tesla's casting alloy recipe spraying the dye with cooking oil to create a thin, cheap, and expendable barrier between the aluminum alloy and the steel dye, and by using hardened steel dyes. Finally, the gigacasting process removes production steps such as machining. Eliminating production steps reduces cost and makes gigacasting a viable alternative to steel bodies. If you'd like to know more about the economics of gigacasting, check out my gigacasting economics video. The next video of the Gigacasting series will be my speculation on how the Gigacasting will marry with the exoskeleton of the Cybertruck. The Cybertruck won't be using a traditional body-on-frame design or a unibody design. It's something new altogether. So how will it all come together in the factory? If you enjoyed this video, please consider supporting me on Patreon with the link at the end of the video or as a YouTube member. You can find the details in the description. A special thanks to my YouTube members and all the patrons listed in the credits. I appreciate all your support, and thanks for tuning in.